Welcome back to the channel guys. It is me 8744. I believe today is day 9 of the Asian Cup guys. So once again, we just saw another almost upset just took place. And guys, I think with this Asian Cup, I think I can make things I think I can establish one thing. All the big teams have one weakness. All the big teams is beatable. There is no team that you should fear in this Asian Cup. Because many of us thought in coming into this tournament that Japan and South Korea would sweep this tournament, meet each other in the final and Let's see who wins. Now, it's not like that anymore. You know, and it's going to be, it's, it's very interesting. And take a bow with Jordan. Jordan put out a fantastic display. I was very, very impressed with Jordan. And this was a team that I had low expectations for coming to the Asian Cup. I said this team would finish bottom of the group. And not only, not only are they likely to qualify, they might actually top this group, which is something that would be insane in itself. Imagine a scenario where both Japan and South Korea don't top their groups. I don't know if that's ever happened in Asian Cup history. Please let me know in the comments below, guys, because I'm really interested to know. Because from my, from my knowledge, when I did the research, I don't think it's ever happened. Maybe it has happened like in the 1980s, but it hasn't happened in the 21st century, I believe. Anyways, getting back to this game. Jordan, man. So let's start with the, let's start with the first moment of the game, which was the penalty. And for me, it was definitely a penalty. I don't think there's a art. I don't think there should be a debate about this because he clearly didn't win the ball. Son gets tackled in the box. Definitely for me a penalty. Um, actually, was it Son? Yeah, I think it was Son that won the penalty. I, I know he scored the penalty, but did he win the penalty? I, I kind of forgot to be honest. Let me check. I think he won the penalty though. I think he won it. Let me see. Did he win the penalty? Yeah, yeah. He also won the penalty as well. So like. You know, he scored the penalty, and he converts. This is what I really like about players. Like, whenever you win the penalty, you score it. That means you did more. I give you more importance to show that, hey, you took the initiative, right? From that point on, South Korea didn't really look great. Jordan actually started to dominate, and they got their goal from the set piece. It was actually given as an own goal. Park scored the own goal, and it was a great, great header. And I guess it bounced off of Park, I guess. I don't really quite remember. And then, obviously, in the second half, man, Jordan scored a, a... I mean, the first half, before the second half, Jordan scored a nice, amazing goal outside the box. I'll never eat. And then the second half, man, South Korea put pushing and pushing. Uh, Jordan also had the chances in the second half to take the lead, but they didn't. And you can see right here, guys, they were the much better team in the first half. Second half, though, I got to admit, uh, South Korea did come alive. Uh, Jordan did have that one really good chance. I think it was a substitute in the 70th minute. And then South Korea finally draws level in stoppage time with an own goal from Jordan. And it was the center of Al Arib. And um, for J South Korea, man, they take home a crucial point. Because I believe if Jordan had won this game, they would have topped. The they would have been able to top this group. Because Jordan have the way better head. Jordan, of course, have to head-to-head. -head. Remember, guys, head-to-head -head is a tiebreaker, not goal difference. So keep that in mind. And I just think that for South Korea, man, it's it's really disappointing for me because I actually think the South Korea team is good. It's just that defensively, they look a very, very suspect. I'm not really convinced with the defensive displays. And I feel like defensively, they were very, very vulnerable in the day. And another issue with South Korea is that where's Wang Gi Chan? Where's Wang Gi Chan? I think they really need Wang Gi Chan in this tournament. And you can see, I think he's still injured. So that's a really, really big blow because for me, this Cho guy is just isn't it. I'm sorry, this Cho guy isn't it. Um, he's just not good enough, I'm sorry, to be a starter. And I'm looking at the other South Korean players. Like, they really need Son. I'm sorry, not Son. They really need Wang Gi-chan. Yeah, man, for Jordan, man, they're going to feel devastated. They didn't take home. They didn't They didn't um, win this game. But at the same time, though, I think if you ask many Jordan fans before the game, would they take a draw? Absolutely. I think absolutely they would take a draw. But it's just the manner of which the game happened. They would be, like, devastated that we didn't win this game. We should have won. We should have won this game. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, and South Korea, man, they live to fight for another day. And remember, guys, the draw actually benefits Jordan because Jordan is actually on top of the group by goal difference. So it could come down to a situation whichever team beats up because Jordan is playing against Bahrain. And we're going to get to Bahrain in a bit. South Korea is playing Malaysia. Malaysia are eliminated, though. Malaysia have nothing to play for. But given what we've seen in South Korea, Jordan could do something. Moving on to the next game we have here is Bahrain 1, Malaysia 0. No. I told you guys this would happen. I told you guys this would happen. And I was, I, I saw this coming. I said in my predictions that Bahrain will win 1 0. And I'm very, very proud I got this exact prediction crack because it was a close game. It was a very, very close game. And I got to admit, man, Malaysia, man, they were just so. Like, I got to commend Malaysia here. Defensively, they were a lot better than against Jordan. Malaysia, at least defensively, learned their lessons and put out a respectable showing. But it's just a matter of, it's kind of already too late because the goal defense is really bad. They're a minus five goal difference. And even if they do win, 
mathematically it won't matter because Bahrain have the better head to head. So and it's just it's just really sad for Malaysia because they really honestly if they didn't get that battering against Jordan. They could have been they could have been in a decent position, but it's just that battering really destroyed them. As for Malaysia, man, they had that really good chance. They had that really good chance. I think it was the fifteenth minute of the game where the goalkeeper had to make a big save. Um, it was clear yeah, there was someone trying to make the block, and then someone got the shot there. And then from that point on, man, Jordan was just simply the better team. Jordan was simply the better team. They created chance after chance. Um, they were not great in the first half, though. Bahrain were terrible in the first half when it came to the final third. But the second half, man, they actually came alive, made some good chances. Uh, Hazemi made some good saves, and then finally, Madan scored in stoppage time to break Malaysian hearts and get home a massive, and I mean a massive, three points because now. This group is interesting because now they've been playing against um, Jordan for basically a spot in the round, basically to determine which seed are going to finish. Because I'm pretty sure, um, I'm pretty sure Jordan and South Korea have advanced. Bahrain though may have not advanced because Bahrain still needs goal difference to be on their side. Although it's a minus one goal difference, so if Bahrain can make a draw against Jordan, they should be fine. But um, if they win against Jordan though, it makes things interesting. So. I'm really interested to see how that pans out, of course, and um, it's going to be very interesting. So, yeah, shout out to Bahrain. For me, though, and that, one of the big issues I have with Bahrain is that defensively they're solid, but their attack is abysmal. Their attack is abysmal. I don't see them doing really well go in the knockout stage. Maybe quarters at best, but really, for me, it's probably going to be around a 16 exit because this attack is just simply abysmal, and I really do worry for them in the round of 16 clashes. So, as for Malaysia, man... I, you got to give them credit for this because they put up a good display, a much more respectable performance than against Jordan, but just enough quality, man. That's just the sad truth, and you can see right here, Bahrain were the better team in almost every stat in the department. The only stat they were not better in was the duels um, and defense, defense in particular, but yeah, I mean, attacking-wise, they were the much better team. You can see right here, according to football, and yeah, man. Badam, man, scoring a goal in 96 minutes to break Malaysian hearts. Because, dude, I, I really wish it... Uh, I, you know, I'm kind of, in some ways, kind of glad that Bahrain won, but I'm also kind of devastated for Malaysia because I really wanted to them get a point that would make the final games, that would make, give them a purpose in the final games, like, hey, we can nick some, we could do something here, but yeah, it is what it is, and so yeah, those are my thoughts, man, those are my thoughts in the two games, so I want to know what you guys think in the comments below, please remember to like and subscribe, of course, if you guys did enjoy, um, remember guys, tomorrow, guys, we're doing our Asian Cup Group F games, and then we're going to have a live stream around at, I believe, like 5, uh, 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so... Um, hope I can see you guys then. And uh, yeah, like I said, guys. Remember, guys, like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.